Ladies and gentlemen, uh, good afternoon once again on behalf of the Education Committee of the Bengal Chamber of Commerce. I hope you had a lovely lunch and uh, after this lovely lunch we are going to have our absolutely lovely session. So this session is Leaders Pick 2 um, and it says, is technology driving innovation towards millennial education? And we have with us two of the very, very important person working on this kind of project. Kingshuk Banerjee, Director Global Delivery, Cognitive Computing, Global Business Service, IBM India. And with him is uh, Aninda Ghosh, uh, Global Watson Health Leader, Cognitive Business Decision Support, IBM India. So may I have the privilege on behalf of the Bengal Chamber of Commerce to welcome these two gentlemen on this stage and start the presentation. Thank you very much. Hello. Are you all awake after a wonderful lunch? So thank you very much, uh, Bengal Chamber of Commerce, for having me here today. Uh, this is one of the most prestigious chambers of commerce that I know of, a very well established, very well reputed. And I thank you, all of you again, coming here, inviting me, and coming here to listen to us. So with me today, we have Anindya Ghosh. Anindya is also part of our IBM analytics and artificial intelligence practice. We work together for many IBM clients worldwide to get them artificial intelligence, advanced analytics adopted. So a couple of things, very quickly. My background, uh, I mean, whatever I do in IBM, my passion, my PhD area, everything lies in AI. And artificial intelligence, as I see today, it is we are probably scratching the surface, 0.01% of what's going, to, what's going to come in the next 10 years. On India, he goes around the world working on knowledge management systems. His biggest client today is a global pharmaceutical company, Pfizer, where he is helping them with many things, drug discovery included. So next half an hour, this is how we're going to do. We will share some of the things that are happening in the education industry some of the ways technology is absolutely transforming pedagogy, learning, worldwide, education, individual, corporate, in almost every aspect of it. I'll share with you a couple of very interesting examples and a small demo on the personalized learning. How are the learning pathways being determined today by analytics and artificial intelligence. And after that, Anindya will take us through the rest of the journey, summarizing how it is being applied in the corporates as well as in society in general. So let me share with you a few things, first of all. And the last 10 minutes, we can have some questions and answers. So one important thing. Education, learning, this entire space is absolutely getting transformed. We can see this right in front of our eyes every day. If you go to Deakin University in Australia, or if you go to the K-12, which is 10 plus 12 system, you know, in Louisiana, in a little bit in, in southern part of US, you will see how the focus today in on how the focus today is on getting everybody on board at a certain standard and level of education. And to do that, one extremely important philosophy is how can you spend more time with these individuals 
one on one and help them with their learning. Now this is important because our conventional learning, you have a fixed time and you have a group of people coming in. You give them a course and then at the end of the course you usually have a bell curve, a normal distribution. Majority of the guys fall in the middle, some excel, some do not. That's one theory. The other part, Bloom. Bloom's theory was uh, Benjamin Bloom. He was one of the educational psychologists. His theory, 1980s, and uh, many of these people, they walked on, is something a little bit different. Look, let us not have time as a constant factor. Let us have time as variable, and let's give the people who are a little bit disadvantaged, who are falling back, more time and effort with them to go and bring them up to speed so that at the end of the day we can have a more even distribution. What was the result? Not always, but with their limited experience, the experiments, what they found is if you go spend time and effort with the kids who are falling behind, 80 to 90 percent of them now can be all brought together in a small, in a smaller, narrower band of that normal distribution. They got actually two sigma, they call it a two sigma theory. They got twice an improvement on the overall variability. Now this is interesting. Why? We all understand. I, I studied here in Calcutta. I remember my school days in South Calcutta. There were some kids who were absolutely razor sharp. They are doing all over. And some of us, not so bright like me, we, were, we wanted more attention. Now, when you look for attention, wh where do you go? Those days, we didn't have internet and all. Now, today, we have this wonderful learning tutors, AI-powered, artificial intelligence-powered, that can help me. And this is interesting, because what you are trying to do is one-on-one -on -one tutoring at scale. You cannot replicate for, say, 6 billion people in the world, say 100 million, they go to schools, and for 100 million, each one of them, you have 100 million tutors. It's not a feasible value prop, right? What can you do, though? And then, even if you have 100 million tutors helping 100 million kids, there would be a wide distribution of the capability of this 100 million tutors, right? So what we do is we take help of technology. We say, technology, can you please help me? You create yourself as a virtual tutor. You personalize yourself. And then you teach me based on you, you, you monitor my behavior, you watch, you understand, and you devise for me a curriculum, a learning path, specifically just for me, so that I can learn better. Now, this personalized learning, powered by analytics and artificial intelligence, and I will show a demonstration of it, what we are doing with some of our, uh, you know, some, some of the state governments in the US, is very important. Why? Because when a person learns, there are some people who learn through visuals. Some pe pe people, they hear better, they are auditory. Some people take notes. Some people learn from each other. So there are many different styles of learning. Then there are different paces of learning. Some people want to focus on the concepts more, and some people learn from the application of those concepts in real life or in problems. Like one of my very dear friends, he says, Kingship, I don't care about all the theories. All I start is with the problems. If I can go and solve the problems, I understand. And in the process of solving the problems, I refer to the theory as much as I want. Very interesting. So basically, he believes in experiential learning. He wants to see the application fast and walks backward. So there are many different styles of learning, different paces of learning, different paths of learning, different ways of learning. And the interaction, that's also very interesting. The world of interaction is changing. Thanks to the visualization and the rapid improvement of the 
visualization and 3D printing techniques. Today, if you want to go and tell somebody how the heart works, how the aorta and all, how the blood goes through the, uh, the arteries and veins, probably you can go and easily print a 3D heart, plastic by plastic, over an uh, hour or hour and a half, and you can create that replica. Now, you will not go and create that replica for everybody, because that would be cost prohibitive. Let analytics help you. Let, let it be done only for those situations where it merits deep understanding and treatment of the subject. So this is, this is a fascinating world. Now, let me share with you another important thing. So I touched upon the artificial intelligence. I touched upon the next generation visualization. I talked about the 3D print printing. And now comes a very important thing that I'm touching upon is the learning, the deep learning networks that is sweeping, the deep learning networks are sweeping the artificial intelligence world today. What are they? This is how it works. For example, you consider a deep learning network, which is nothing but a neural network, an artificial intelligence concept, a black box. You give them half a million signatures of human beings, and you tell them, and the output, these are bona fide signatures, these are not. Or half a million images of cats, half a million images of dogs. Dogs in different styles, moods, and cats similarly. And then in the end, in the output, you say these are cat images, these are dog images. And the neural networks inside, they keep, and you keep training that with all these images, and the neural network inside, adjusts the weights of the internal elements, we call them perceptrons, to come with the right output when the half a million plus first image come in. So 500,000 first image comes in, the network is already trained, it knows a dog looks usually like this, cat looks usually like this, this must be a dog, this must be a cat. So this kind of neural networks actually try to mimic human behavior. But more importantly, what it does, it is based on feedback learning. You, give, you feedback these images of dogs, dogs and cats, and the output feedback is again recycled into the input. So the neural network is learning. M many of you who have done probability, like Bayesian stats and all, can easily relate to this problem. So they are electrical engineers, right? Feedback loop, you are completing. Human beings do that pretty much all the time. My little child, my 12-year-old daughter, you know, she negotiates with papa and mama based on who is actually, you know, giving in to her demands better. She knows whom to go for what and how to negotiate. So all these things, she's learning from all the feedbacks. If I say, no, you are not going to go for this, you better go and hit the physics books, she knows from the feedback, he is not in the best mood right now. Let's try mama. So this kind of feedbacks, which happens in human beings, the neural networks are trying to mimic, mimic that human behavior. Now, if now let us talk about taking this kind of deep learning, neural networks, artificial intelligence, in the world of education and see how these networks start adjusting itself to each individual person. For example, Anindya. Anindya comes in. Any question, please? OK. So, so when Anindya comes in, I keep watching Anindya's behavior. Anindya take, took two hours just to master this simple concept of say physics. So the next time, similar concepts of physics, similar kinds of problems, I will take him down a different path to see to what he responds better. So I am actually observing continuously Anindya's behavior and accordingly trying to help him master the course in the shortest possible time. So this is that learning path the analytics and AI are enabling today. Here, I love to take a pause and get to a small demonstration 
to demonstrate what exactly we mean, how do we achieve it today. Can I have the sound, please? Sound. Welcome to the Watson Tutor Review for Earth Science, Chapter 18. When a student enters the course, they can begin their assigned reading. Students can engage with the Watson Tutor at any time to ask clarifying questions, review the material, or practice for an upcoming test. When a student opens a dialogue, the tutor introduces itself and explains what the student can do in this tutoring session. Since the student logs in with low mastery, the tutor recommends a concept grouping activity to get started. The tutor automatically extracts these concepts from the text at two levels. When a student clicks submit, they can see what was correct and what was wrong. Okay, so one quick thing. What is happening is out here below, if it is not, if, if it cannot be read properly, it is written less mass gravity, tidal bulge. So this is a tutorial about art and moon. And these concepts like gravity, bulge, and all these things are automatically discovered by an artificial intelligence because that AI agent is reading up using something called natural language processing, reading up the text and sees these are the important concepts on which I have to go, go and test the student or the individual now. So these are the concepts now lined up. And so it is forming a test for the individual. And when the guy goes and drops in the slight bulge to art, it knows that in the same sentence or in the same paragraph, bulge and the diameter of the art were talked together. There is a very strong association. So this is the right answer. So what we are trying to do here is have an AI agent try to read up the material and bring out the important concepts which should be tested upon, and also coming up with the correct answer. So this is what it is doing. So let's move forward a little bit. Of course, there are a lot of things out here, but I would like to. Watson starts the dialogue with a high-level question about the review topic. The student provides a vague answer, and the tutor prompts the student to say more. So, okay, so what is happening here, because the it's student not has really not completed all of their reading. Easily the seen. It's see, it, it asks the question. Uh, by the way, one important question it is asking, that which one has got more gravitational pull, art or the moon? To answer that question, if you have read it, oh, art has got six times more the gravitational moon, you know, you just go and you say yes. But very often, we might have not read it properly. Now, there are two choices I get. Can you help me read, go back to the text, and just bring out last 20, 30 pages, bring out only that snippet where it says, how many times more is Earth's gravitational pull than Moon's? And because of our wonderful search technology, natural processing, you can just go and take it out exactly like the way we find a Chinese restaurant, where is it located near your house on Friday evening. So it goes and brings that. So that's good. The next thing that happens is something very interesting called deduction. What is deduction? So you say, OK, I don't want to go and see the answer. Can you give me some clues to answer this question? Which one has got more pull than the other? Upon which subject in those parts are being talked about. So categorized by subject or the classification within the big video, the small subparts. 
with that, I will love to give it over to Anindya to share some of the more real life examples. Sure. Uh, thank you, Kingship. Uh, good afternoon. Louder? Good. After lunch, I know it's, it's pretty difficult to kind of stay awake. So let me kind of start off with a small anecdote, right? Uh, like Kinshuk talked about his 12-year-old daughter, I have one too. And uh, believe it or not, right, I mean, I believe that I have all the answers to the questions that she has from class. So I kind of, you know, go and, you know, sit down with her. I explain a lot of things to her, right? From the way I talk, you might be able to gauge that I can really explain things. True? Well, after about 15 minutes, she listens to me patiently and says, I have not caught the last 10 minutes of what you said. I said, how can, the, how can it possibly be? I said, listen, I know all the concepts. I'm teaching you. I'm getting down to the basics. I cannot be clearer than this. What is happening out here? And she says, Dad, do not compare yourself to me. Do not compare yourself to me. Extremely important. And I am frustrated. I have no clue how to handle this kid or these millennials, right? That's what I say. I keep sh shaking my head. That's when we go to uh, you know, one, of, uh, one of the special you know, educators and she says that, you know, I have observed her. Her mind races beyond where she is currently. She's thinking too many things at any one point of time. She cannot concentrate. Highly intelligent, but she cannot focus, cannot concentrate. Excellent. I am clueless. What do you do with that? How do I really teach this kind of a child? Right? Do I put her in an international uh, course that help? Are the teachers really qualified to do that? I have no clue. And then, you know, as I work in IBM, we kind of, you know, come across these technologies of really understanding personalized learning. I think we talked about it, talked a lot about it today. Some of the questions that the huge corpus of data that we have today, right, you, uh, you apply underneath and you apply the logic of machine learning algorithms on top of that to come to what, let's say, your specific child wants, right? That is where you can create customized learning paths. Some of the questions. So my objective today would not be to get into the technology behind artificial intelligence. I think there's a lot you know, that, that is being written and that is being said. I'll talk a bit about the use cases, where we see things are happening, where we see things will happen in the future. Some of these are already happening in some of the countries, still to be adopted in India. And I think that is our objective today to see I think there was, in one of the sessions we said, what applies in London might not apply in India. Absolutely true. But the idea is, let's start with the world of possibilities and see where we land up with, right? So, a few questions. I don't know if, uh, probably a lot of us have gone through these questions, you know, throughout our, um, you know, as we are raising a child. Does my child, is my child more visual? Auditory, kinesthetic. Kinesthetic is feeling. So how does my child learn? I don't even know that in the first place. Is there a way to know that? King Chuk talked about observation. Yes, we can actually observe people as, you know, and when we say observe, it's not a human observing. You can have videos captured of a child in a classroom setting or in another setting, and you can start, you know, analyzing those patterns to say, where does that person fit? And based on that, what kind of, again, based on a lot of the past, past history, is what kind of learning methods have really worked with the child? Um, very important question. At times, uh, a lot of us face, my child is too young, born in Jan or Feb, cannot really catch up with the class, probably in, in, in nursery, uh, nursery one or two. Does he or she have to repeat the class? I don't know. I'm clueless. Who can, who can give me the answer? Which, what board, what syllabus? ICSE, CBSE, international board, any other board? I don't know. I'm confused. Can I get, get an answer? If I'm moving from another country, we did. 
when my daughter was two years old, right? And I have no op uh, opinions to fall back on. Are there people out here? Are, are there friends, family, who can tell me what it is? Do I, can I really trust them? Are they backing their, what they're telling me based on data, or are they just saying it based on their, their own opinion? But can I get some of, you know, some of those opinions, or rather based on facts, from, let's say, a machine or an algorithm which has already looked at a lot of similar cases in the past and can throw me some recommendations. Very important one, I see a lot of kids struggling with that. A lot of kids as well as students in college. What should be my elective? I, I was, I took, I took months figuring out whether I should do a marketing MBA or a finance MBA or HR, I, I don't know. I selected one of them because probably it was the in thing to do. Was that really suited to my personality? Only time would tell. But when time told me later on, it was way many years down the line. Can't rewind the clock. Is there a way, is there a way that we can match the personality type of the person to what kind of, which field the person should be taking in life? Extremely important question. And by the way, some of, at, you know, in our times, we would start off with those questions, maybe when I was in the ninth grade or maybe when I was in the 10th grade. Believe me, kids are starting that off way, way, way sooner, much earlier in their life. Can, can there be systems that can help with those, you know, with those questions? It, Small ones, but you know, it can re really bring a, a lot of tension between parents. Do I put French or German as the third language for my child to be taught in school when the school gives me options? I have no clue. Would that be something that my child would value? Or would, would it just be that, oh, uh, every other child is you know, learning French, so l let my child learn French, and you know, he or she says, oh, I'll do it, Dad, because I, I want to make you happy. And then you know, th the child kind of starts Flunking. I says, I just don't like it. But by that time, you've already chosen the elective. So, some of the examples, you know, that I chose to kind of, you know, talk about why it's, 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 it's I mean, and how, why and how both. Why it's important, personalized learning, and how AI can, you know, help us in that. Now, moving to the next point, we all understand. I, and, and in fact, we, we know, and this is true not only in India, and I know this is true in a lot of these developing nations where the population explosion has really happened, right? Huge younger population, lack of adequate number of well-qualified teachers in the system. Could be higher education, could be primary education. So what happens in, in, in those cases, right? We are probably chasing a pipe dream, is it? Probably not. As long as we have only humans trying to you know, go after a solution, it is not a scalable solution. I think Kingshu talked about that. Can we make these solutions scalable? We're probably at the tip of the iceberg. We know that these solutions are being scaled in other areas, right? IBM, for example, I'll, I'll give you an example. Take the topic a bit away from education to healthcare. Today, there are systems, AI systems, which are actually advising doctors in terms of treatment pathways in areas which are legally pretty risky, yet AI is getting in those areas. We have, we have, we are, you know, we have done it with Manipal hospitals, we are doing it with Apollo hospitals, for example. Why can we not pick that up and replicate that in the area of education? We absolutely can. The other thing that is happening, and this is something again that we are observing you know, from an industry perspective is, learning is becoming more visual and dynamic, pretty much self-explanatory, I think King Shuk talked about that. The other thing that's happening, and very, very important, very extremely important, is the human experience. Learning not by just seeing, or writing, or hearing, a holistic framework of learning, what we call as Immersive technologies, immersion. You immerse people, immerse students, you know. So there are immersion labs that 
a lot of technology companies are you know, set up. IBM is obviously one, one in the forefront, but an example is something which our PMO is doing today. It's called Atal Tinkering Labs, where they are selecting students, some of the best and brightest, who go and you know, show their talent in multiple ways. You can test them out, and then you bring them, put them in, in, in you know, immersion labs, right? Uh, we are working with the government of India to kind of you know, set up those labs and get the students in, those, in that environment to hands-on do stuff, build the Bill Gates of tomorrow from the schools of today. Not later on, not from a garage, but from the schools itself. Bill Gates did from a garage, right? So that's, that's the shift that we are seeing, right? Um, we are seeing, we have actually, you know, we went to the University of Bangalore last day for a course curriculum, uh, you know, revision discussion. They talked to us and said, can you help us set up an immersion lab? We are going down that pathway. So we are seeing this trend picking up in the industry today, right? Industry and academia in a partnership where immersion labs and obviously use of AI and digital in those immersion labs becomes key. To, to, uh, to learning. The next point, and this was pretty alarming, and I was reading this, and I, it, in that time, I, you know, it really, I didn't believe it in the, in the first instance. We talked about it. Poor employability. Not employed or em employability. People who cannot be employed because their skills completely do not match what the industry wants. I don't know if these numbers are true, but what, what I read is that if you look at India as, as a whole, the non-employability percentage has moved from about 50 to 80 percent. Alarming statistics, alarming statistics. So here is where this, the, another use case where AI can actually help in the skilling, right? There is, you know, there are these existing core competencies that are required in the industry. And there was a mention of the fact that if you ask the industry, they, they, they don't even know what the core competencies are at times because it's changing very fast. But is there a way to capture that, capture that from multiple sources to make some sense you know, out of the data to at least ensure that it is not something that is only one individual talking, right? and then seeing what has to be done with our workforce and can AI really, so AI can help you in two ways. One, figuring out where the gap is, which is important at times, you don't even know where the gap is. And second, helping to bridge the gap through the education pathways and start young, right? Big one, again we are involved in a big way. Largely outdated curriculum in a lot of our universities, B schools. I have seen, and I, I personally, King Shubhan, I have personally been invited to be on the board of IIM Rachi and uh, University of Bangalore to change their curricula, obviously, not just as individuals who have some weird opinion, but using data, using AI, right? And I'm seeing the trend picking up more and more in our country. <clears throat> this was an interesting one. Streamline and bring to track a research culture that is redundant. We all know about India's research culture. We have the best of brains in the world, yet our research is probably nowhere down there. We all, there's a huge brain drain, right? We all leave our country, we all leave our cities. What's happening out here? What is happening? If something is terribly wrong. Here is where, and when I was reading this and I was kind of going through some of the case studies, it's like, wonderful. This is something that I passionately believe in. I had moved from India. I was in the US for about four years, came back. And one of the reasons I came back was I just wanted to give back to my country and be being here, right? But I was not finding any avenues. Frustration, hopelessness. Excellent use case where AI can kind of you know, step in to kind of you know, stem the rot, if I may say so. Another one, SWOT analysis of 
prospective researchers and research labs. Now, why is that important? So basically, what happens is you have to match it with the grant. So for example, there are grant agencies in India who have to allocate grants for certain research institutions without no knowledge of what's, what's really going to happen. Will this research work? What's the likelihood of success? No clue. No past history. So maybe nepotism, maybe other things that, you know, which come up and grants are, are provided. Maybe the grants at times are not even adequate. Can you use analytics to figure out which are those research, research, uh, research institutes I'm sorry, that actually need the grants and what is the level of grants and what is the probability of success? Can you link them? Amazing thought. Up till now, we are talking about from the point of view of the students, point of view of research institution, what about our teachers? Are our teachers, is teaching one of the easiest professions? What's the jury in the room? I used to think teaching is a very easy profession. Go to school at 8, come back at 3 o'clock. Do we agree? Do we agree? No. Teaching has become one of the toughest professions. And in the recent years, it has been tougher and tougher. I have spoken myself to a lot of teachers, right? Beyond teaching, there is a lot of work that teachers have to do. For example, our grading system. Administrative jobs. So what's happening out there? We are not allowing them to grow and build their core skills, which is teaching. Personalize it for a student. Build the empathy. Spend the time with the student. No. Teachers are spending more time on, on stuff, which is beyond ac academics. Can you use AI? Can you use automation to be able to take that away and free up the time for, for teachers? It, it's, it's, an, it's, it's, a, it's an extremely important question that I think we all of us should think about. And I think you know, the, the last point is, is something that um, King Chuk touched upon in, in, a, uh, in, a, in, a, in a certain way, but what is it doing or what is it you know, bound to do? I just talked about specific instances. What's it going to do to a student, to a teacher? to an educational institute. But at the end of the day, what we are seeing is, and in fact, you know, uh, the video that you saw was actually a case study that we worked with one of the US firms and we're actually implementing it. It is changing the entire ecosystem. Entire ecosystem. And when I say when I mean ecosystem, it's changing the way that teachers think, the teachers teach, the way students start you know, you know, picking up concepts, the, the way students apply concepts, the way, for example, another use case is, how can an education institute even market itself? I am, am I recruiting the right skill set of teachers to teach in my kind of school with a certain kind of values? Am I selecting the right set of students? Is there a match? How do I market myself better? How do I do my campus placements better? Campus placements, big thing for a lot of educational institutes, MB institutes and you know, tech institutes. It's a stressful affair. I've been through it. I've been through my engineering and my MBA. I, I've seen that. It's a huge affair. Can you streamline the process? Can you make it much more data oriented? Absolutely yes, you can. So net net, and I know I'm probably a couple of minutes over time, the possibilities are endless. Question, the big, big, big question is, some of these things are being done today. Yes, they are being done. Some of them are to come in the future. What will India adopt? That's important. Thank you. Any questions, please? in a different way. But in a class of 40 
or you know as you know maybe one of the boards may prescribe my question is how will you teach in a class of 40 who are all 40 different unique students plus they have one syllabus which needs to be completed within a period of time say maybe 200 days in a year and out of that 200 days you know you have examination so how will that artificial intelligence teach them on a personal level absolutely lovely this is this is exactly uh, everyday problem it's a that practical you are question very practical yeah. very practical question thank you so see overnight you just cannot go and switch onto a different way you still have got to finish the curricula the course there are obligations that you have to your students but meanwhile can you go and create a small you know ai powered and not necessarily you have to start with you know big ai it can be you know analytics based which helps the students come up learn some of the more difficult concepts in that curricula that's number one you can take the testing out of your table you have automated test box which can create which can test this 40 people straight away the content that you want to teach today how do you teach is it from the books is it from the boards like for example i have stopped going to those classes where the professor just goes and teaches on the board you know i can read it up i go to the professor to understand to have a he talked about empathy right so can you go and use this kind of technology which is right now available the uh, some video content or some lectures you can break it up modularize it and give for this set you go and study this thing up for this set you are weak on this i understand you go and brush up on this area so for these things for one human being it's very difficult you don't have time for that you have your family you have your other commitments so you have to have this smart box a smart agents that curate the content breaks up the content tests people help them with special learning and all these things you cannot do all of them together so you have got to start one by one and slowly get there and a lot of it can be done not necessarily using watson open source computing and this is a wonderful opportunity for many startups here i do not know how many educational startups here this is exactly what i would think the educational startups would help academia with does it answer your question you know, one question, have you all seen the result? That is what I would like to listen from you because, you know, if you've uh, seen people using it and it has really made a difference, uh, you know, that will probably answer my question. Sure. K-12 system in many southern states, Florida, Louisiana, they have started using it. Office Depot partners with them. IBM helps both Office Depot and the states and then it's producing good results now. That's all I can share today. Okay, thank not you. In, uh, as of now, not aware of anything in India. Uh, yes, I think a lot of um, studies needs to be done. What our industry uh, requires, how we are going to produce our children, whether there is a link with the university and the school, you know, whether uh, the industry has a link with the university and the school education and the college education. So it has to be seamless development. But that is somewhere, you know, uh, we are having a lot of gaps in between. So what we are studying in school, when the students are going to the college, you know, there is a gap. When the college students are going to the university or maybe they are doing MBA, again, there is a gap. And when these MBA students or engineering students are coming out from those universities or wherever they're coming out from, they're not ready to be employable. So there is a gap everywhere. How do we fill up those gaps? You know, that is the question mark. Right. So one very important, Aninda, you want to answer no, that? Uh, uh, so my, uh, my, I just had a one-line answer is that this is a much, much bigger problem, right? AI can solve at times nuggets of these, but this is an ecosystem problem. It's a challenge of our regulatory bodies pitching in, changing the nature of education to an extent, aligning the various boards, the syllabus. So it is, as I said, AI is fooling this, but it has to kind of you know, take off after that and get into something like a workflow 
which works in education across the entire country. I mean, it, it goes beyond that. And then one Sorry. very important thing, thanks to all of you who are here today participating in this, most importantly, this is a cultural problem. We have to start changing the culture to a more innovative, more risky, more different world and research-oriented. Well, that's why we are here today. This session, if it can fire up a little bit of imagination, we would be very happy. We would love to work with any startups who want to help you. Sure. Any other question, please? Yes, ma'am. Uh, I'd just like to uh, ask a question. Before the uh, lunch break, Professor Foskett was talking about how theory and knowledge is not enough. Um, the AI system that you've been talking about talks about giving knowledge and teaching. Um, how does it help or how can it help in developing cognitive learning? How can it uh, guide a student through building an attitude or the right mindset um, for personalized learning that we have been talking about, I think, as teachers in a classroom of 40, 45, 50, um, each child is different. They have personal ways of learning, and uh, as teachers, we need to be empathetic to those. So how, does, how would an artificial intelligence system teach us or, or have the empathy to deal with those individual learners? Okay. Uh, you want to, yeah. to, to, to sure. the future? Uh, you see, this is a very interesting thing. AI, at the end of the day, is just like another baby whom you teach how to behave. If you go and teach the baby to curse, that's what the baby learns of. If, if you teach the baby the right behavior, and that's how the AI you know, systems grow. Now, when it comes to this empathy thing, you are absolutely right. People learn from each other, say in a classroom setting. Now, when they go and fight, within the classroom, what does the teacher say? Or they you know, abuse each other. Teacher say, no, nope, that's not good behavior. Or they say, they ask a question, and they inject competition to get the questions answered. There are many techniques the teacher does today. Can you go and have that AI agent, which is actually running the classroom in a virtual way, the right behavior from the right classroom teachers? If you can do that, AI probably can do some of it much better. But at the end of the day, there are certain things classrooms afford which is not easy to replace. Creativity, imagination, these are not AI's forty. These are humans' forty today. Maybe 20, 30 years later, slowly we'll start seeing some of those systems like that. So in one way, AI is empathetic. You can go and build AI system with a little bit more understanding. Sometimes humans are very, you know, sometimes they get very easily pissed off. Oh, I can't answer this question. Gone. But AI would consistently be nice and polite. But for that, a very important branch of science is coming up, which is called ethics in AI. What do you teach? How do you condition it? Exactly the ethics in human society are going to be transferred to that AI world. That's what we have to learn. But to answer your question, in short, some of it can be done. Some of it, we cannot at today's technology state. Can we apply? For application part, we absolutely need the industry partnership and the startup partnership. If you have gap between school and the college, college and the industry, that gap can be bridged only if we have the right imagination and right will to go and create a new ecosystem where people come together and, and start creating a new society, new technology, new thinking. So it's a cultural shift that we have to affect. So uh, just to add to that, one point is, you talked about AI at times being more empathetic because it allows a student to fail, right? It allows because I can go and ask the same damn question to the AI engineer and say, I don't understand some three, four times, and yet it will be polite. I, as a student, will be extremely cagey to ask the same question more than twice to my teacher, right? So this actually came up in one of the research which, which said that what is happening out here is there are times when a change in the way that education is, is taking place, 
teachers at times, even if they know the answer, they don't, they don't give it out straight away. They said, no, you go out. In this case, it's probably just a Google search, right? But when real AI systems come into play, go and find the answer yourself. Take as many number of tries and then come back, right? That is the, that is the way the child will not fear, but at the same time, there will be one element of human interaction that will still be there. So it's a combination of both. I think one of the things right. about AI is just AI cannot work. And, and one thing, that lack of judgment, because humans are judgmental, it's a very important thing. One of my Japanese colleagues, when I was working in Tokyo, told me, you know, King Shuk, what prevents me from speaking good English? It's not that I don't understand. I fear failure. I fear people would laugh at my English. That's why I can't improve my English. So AI systems, you can talk to them without fear. But then, to create such systems, you should have the right set of ethics. Sure. Um, One final question, right? Or are we done? Are, are we good on time, or we are over? OK, done. Probably Just the last question. Last yeah. question. Uh, good afternoon, sir. Uh, this is, my question is uh, to first uh, Mr. King Shuk. Sir, I have worked with Indian Institute of Management, Ahmedabad, previously. So with institutes like these, they are A-list and they are faculty driven. So you said like in your uh, PowerPoint presentation that if I have to attend a class which just has a faculty writing on the board, yeah, I, I wouldn't want to. But with again, A-list institutes, the case is the same. You just have one PowerPoint uh, aid with you and then there is a faculty. So are you trying to replace it with artificial intelligence, or what are you trying to say? Sir, very good. Uh, let me uh, share one thing. Whether the teacher uses PowerPoint or the Blackboard, to me, I would rather not attend that class first of all in the first place. I would love to. I'm, I'm a more of a visual guy. I try to read it up first. If I have any problem, I'll ask questions. So I believe more in interactions. That's me. But then. I'm not saying that mode of education, conventional one, is completely outdated. It still has its relevance for other people. All right, thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks for joining us. Thank you so much for an interesting session on technology post lunch. and. Uh, we have a very pleasant task to perform, and for that, may I please invite Mr. Deb A. Mukherjee, Vice President, the Bengal Chamber of Commerce and Industry, to please come up on dais and hand over mementos to Mr. Kingshuk Banerjee, Director, Global Delivery, Cognitive Computing, Global Business Services, IBM India Private Limited. And to Mr. Onindo Ghosh, Global Markets Leader, Pfizer and Watson Health Leader, Cognitive Business Decision Support. May I request Dr. Suborno Bose to please come up on dais and introduce our next speaker. Well, that was, that was absolutely rocking. I almost got swept away. I'm going to my hotel room now with the huge dose of artificial intelligence. But ladies and gentlemen, we have got a very, very special speaker now. And at the end of next 40 minutes, you will really agree with me. So we have with us uh, Shorab Sharkar, who is the founder of Karm Jog Foundation. And uh, we're very fortunate to have Mr. Sarkar with us and to talk about what has been the theme of this annual conference, the future of education. So may I please request Mr. Sarkar to come up on the stage, please, sir. Can we have a big, big round of applause for this great man from Bengal, please?
close your eyes. आखे बंद, चोक बंदो और मन शांत। Close your eyes, आखे बंद और मन शांत, चोक बंदो। And go back into your past. Just travel into the past. Think about yesterday, last week, last month, a few years back. Keep going back to the time when you were younger, when you were a small child, and even before that, to the time before you were born. Keep going. Hundred years, two hundred years, thousands of years, to the time before that. Aro pichone. Aro pichone. Keep going till you cannot go any further and create a picture in your own head. एक तो छोभी तो इरी करेंगे एक एक तस्वीर बना लेते हैं an image a scene of where you have reached. It could be anything. It is your picture. It is your scene. Stay with that. Stay with the picture for a while. Stay in that scene for a little while. And having done so, open your eyes. Namaskar. Namaskar. I am not God. I am not even Bill Gates. In, when this century turned over, Bill Gates actually created a lab in Cambridge, Massachusetts. And in that lab, he got some of the best, best brains in the world today. From across every faculty that you can imagine, whether it is molecular biology, whether it is climatology, whether it is technology, artificial intelligence, whatever. If you are Bill Gates, you can do all that. And he created this lab and told his brief was that do whatever you need to do. Ask for whatever you want. But tell me where the world is moving. Where are we going? Now, if you are Bill Gates, madam, if you are Bill Gates, isn't this what you would want to do? Because you have, you're already, you've achieved everything that as a human you would have wanted to achieve. Now what do you want to do? 
No, no, you want to become God. Because you've done something for everyone. He's already created the, you know, what all of us are using. Then you want to be God. And what makes you God? The ability to predict the future. Because the definition of God, we say, is omniscient, omnipotent, etc. Almighty, omnipotent. And omniscient, shabjanta. He knows everything, knows the future. Which is why I said, very humbly, I am not God. But somehow, I've been given this onerous responsibility to talk about the future of education. Huh? Possible? Bhagavan to nahi ho, Bhagavan no hi, Bill Gates no hi. But I can tell you, Stephen Emmett, he wrote a book in 2012 called 10 Billion. Write down that name also and please go back and read. That is the required reading, not for coming here, but for leaving this place. Any class you go to, any session you attend, there is normally, you go there with the objective of learning something. There is no learning that can happen. As we heard, if you just come here and I lecture and you listen and go. So this is the required reading. And note down the number, 98300, 98300-67217. Please send a WhatsApp message, not greetings, happy birthday, good morning, picture, or no, no. Just a maximum 100 word message about this reading, okay? What you concluded after reading this. This is not artificial intelligence, ladies and gentlemen, but with the technology that all of you are using today, we have done something, if you are true to this, then you would have learned something very, 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 very perceptive about what we are going to talk. Only thing I will tell you about this, about where he reached, is that it is really interesting. Because if you are Bill Gates, and if you have spent all this money getting all the best brains to come together and tell you, where are we going 400 years from now, 500 years from now? Because that's what he wants to know. Because in any case, he has to prepare for that. He wants to de develop technologies in readiness for that, etc. Now, and I'm telling you, this is the... Anyone of you read this book? Anyone of you knew about Stephen Emmett? Show of hands. Anyone of you? No? Okay. Everyone show your hands. Everyone put your hand up. Anyone of you who hasn't read the book, who has read the book, take your hand down. Who has? Everyone hand up. And if you have read the book, if you knew about this, take your hand down. No one. Okay. Thank you. You just turn it around because if I say if you have read the book and no one has read it, there is no exercise. It's good. Nice. Easy to be just sitting like this. So only thing I will tell you is that the last page, the second last page, is really, really interesting. Because it's a, and it's a very simple read, very easy read. You will finish the book in an hour. It's a choti boy yer motun boy, mane as we say. And it's like big fonts, lot of pictures and all that. It's not like a research lab head writing a very academically serious book. It's not that. But the second last page, where he reaches, is really interesting. And the last page is even more interesting. The second last page is two lines, and the last page is one line. OK? So that's the suspense. If you want to know the future, well, that is at least something that is available. I don't know the future. I don't know. Where, what is the future of education? For me to even claim anything like that will be pure hypocrisy. So first of all, since this onerous responsibility to come and talk here about the future of education, I must tell you that I'm not going to do that. But, ladies and gentlemen, I can talk a little bit, spend a little time with all of you.
talking about what is my learning, my vision of a possible future of education. Whether that will be or not is up to, up to, is up to, up to, up to, up to, up to, up to. Whether that future will be or not is up to. I want to hear it from everyone. You have not come here, you have not been fed here just to sit there and sit like this. No, please understand. It will be of no use. The possible future education that we are going to talk about is something that may be possible, but it is up to, up to, up to, up to. Very difficult audience, I must tell you. And you are educators. You want your students to be responsive. Now, let me first talk about why even think about, have a vision about a future of education. Why should we have any vision or any thoughts about what the future of education should be? Why bother? Kyo soche iske bare mein? Keno bhabbo future? Only if there is something wrong with the present, only then you have a vision. If everything is great, then it's great. And of course, there is a lot of things. There are a lot of things that are great about the way education is. It has brought us to where we are. Everything that we talked about, artificial intelligence, the technology, for whatever, that's still a little bit in the future. But think of all the things that are going on now around us, all the possibilities that we humans have given to ourselves, where we have brought ourselves. The phenomenal possibilities are all because of the education that we have received over the ages, and especially in the last 100, 200 years. Think of the sweeping changes that we have brought upon ourselves. All of you, I mean, you pick up the phone and you're just, just that simple thing in the, just a few years. How it has changed us. Something that was, that seemed like a, a, a dream when you were growing up. Just imagine if you thought that you would be, it would be possible for you to just sit here and touch on a screen and summon all the learning, all the knowledge, reach anyone, etc., etc., all that. Just would have seemed like the wildest of science fiction, but that is true. And a lot of those things have happened because of the way the education system has worked. If it has brought us here, well then we should just let it take us where it has to take us. Why even bother about the future of education? But ladies and gentlemen, I must tell you that there is reason to worry. And again, I will, I will push all of you towards the second last and the last page. I hope all of you have taken down. It's very interesting. That's the reason. You will find the reason why we should think about the future of education. Why we should have a new vision for the future of education. What are the problems? So that's, let's start there. In the last session we heard, let's start with a problem, then we have, if we can solve it. What are the problems? The fundamental problem, the fundamental problem is that the education as we see it today, with AI, without AI, or whatever it is, is fundamentally purposeless. First problem, if you love taking notes, you can do that. This is not an injunction, but First problem, purposeless. Proof, well again, the distinguished speakers who came here and who were talking about it, you remember? He stood here and he said, I didn't know whether I should do an MBA in, in my MBA, whether I should do finance or whether I should do marketing. Now think about it, this is, a, this is the cream of the nation. And at a juncture, after having gone through 20 years, 22 years of the, of, you know, through the education process, no clue whether to do this or that. Why? 
because fundamentally there is no clue to begin with about the purpose of education. Now, Sister Nivedita University, so I'm sure there will be Vivekanand Swamiji Bhakts here, and you will say, Swamiji said the purpose of education is anyone? Anyone? Huh? Manifestation of mind. 50 out of 100. Manifestation of is right, mind is wrong. Anyone? <laughs> we'll come to you, Nita. Anyone else? Okay. Huh? Manifestation of Atma, 50 out of 100. That, that is wrong. <laughs> okay. Manifest, once again, loudly. Oh. Education is the manifestation of perfection that is already in us, already in man. This is exactly what he said. So, I mean, I mean you are right. It could be manifestation of mind, manifestation of soul, etc. I'm not saying you're wrong, but you know, like Newton's third law is a certain thing. So, what he said is what he said. What he said is what she repeated. Now, the point is, first of all, we are all attending Sister Nivedita University sponsored program here and distinguished people, but very few of us even know what Swamiji, the inspiration for Sister Nivedita, everything that made her who she was, what he had to say about education. Okay, let's assume we have now learned. My next question is, most people who know that Swamiji said this, just stop there. Supposing you have perfected, supposing you have manifested the perfection that is already there in you. You have manifested the perfection that is already there in you. Education has been successful, right? As per Swamiji's definition. Then what? Then? Now you're a perfect man. Spread it around. Spread what? It? What is that it? Give it to the others. What is that called? When you want to spread it around? What is that called? Sharing? Sharing? Now, uh, <clears throat> if you are spreading it around and in lieu of something that I will give it to you, but you give 10 rupees to me, is that what you are saying? That, not that kind of sharing. Huh? Not that kind of sharing. What kind of sharing are you talking about? Bus, bus. So without, whether you give me 10 rupees or not, here it is. Right? That. What is that called? When you do things like that, what is that called? Seva. Seva. Edu, at least. Everyone, please. So the purpose of education is very simple. If you have manifested the, the perfection in you, even then the question becomes, what, what with it? And then the answer comes very clearly that you have to give it away. Give it away for in lieu of something. No, then what does it become? What does it become? No, no, if you do it in lieu of something? Business, Business prostitution. Don't, don't be just politically correct. Profession. There was a question asked in the last session. There was a question asked in the last session. Remember, I rang the bell and asked all of you, go a little back, little back. Just go back to the last session and tell me, there was a very profound question asked about teachers. What was this question? Anyone? She seems to be getting all 100 out of 100. Only one attending the class. Said, First venture. Now let's ask some of the last ventures. What was the question or the comment made about teachers in the last session? Just 15 minutes back. Teaching? The question asked that do you agree that teaching has become one of the most difficult? He said jobs. The exact word asked, if you, there is a video that is shooting all this, if you go back and listen to it, the exact word that was used was, teaching, has it become the most difficult profession? Profession? 
profession the question was asked without even the alertness without the chetana the consciousness that i am already relegating this act of teaching to a profession there was no problem no uh, understood on this that i am not even aware that i am saying teaching is a profession is what it is that is how it should be that is the awareness that is the consciousness that drives us so we are identifying the problems with the education today the first thing i said is purpose less the purpose is seva simple you can find any other purpose read any other you know greater swami ji other thing but keep asking what is the purpose of that what is the purpose of that you will inevitably come back to this the ultimate purpose is seva but how many of us even drive our own children in that path when we send them to the education system so i did a small experiment once upon a time when our children were very small we used to when we uh, first started send, sending them to school we found the best school in in the city and they were going there and the, as usual in the bus stand i would go you know to get them into the bus and so i started doing this a very small survey of all the kids standing on the bus stand young class 10 class 2 kid mid mid school junior school i would say beta school kyun ja rahe ho why are you going to school no answer then the teachers also take the same bus so then ask the teachers why do they go to school why are you going to the teachers are at least going because profession tankha band ho jayega to jayenge i went neeta sitting here she invited once same kind of thing for a lecture to her she is the head of department of education in loreto college once she invited for a talk like this and uh, at the end of the of course at the end of the talk i have been made a persona non grata i cannot enter loreto college after that so I, i you have to be beware i don't know whether you will all reject i have given you my number that 983 if you noted it down please send a whatsapp with your conclusion of that and then we'll be in touch but there is every possibility that you will all say reject outright because i'm also calling all of you prostitutes not prostitutes as in women but in the same note if you are a teacher who will work only if you get paid a salary at the end of the month then what's the difference so i actually at the end in in loreto when after the talk very nicely we went and in the staff room we were sitting and all this discussion started and some uh, one of the teachers one of the was talking about all this that you know this the purpose this this purpose of education is gone this that you know i really want to give the best so i said ma'am if they stop giving you the salary from next month will you still work no why so i rested my case so that's the second problem the purpose is gone for the learner is not even addressed so in this in this experiment survey that i used to do in the school bus all the children would stand the bus would come on the bus it is written atma deepo bhava atma deepo bhava is the logo part of the logo of the bus someone who has who has set up the school sat there and you know they must have decided what well, there should be a nice good purposeful thing to it. so that has become there in the bus it is part of the logo it is part of every envelope that the school prints it is part of the report card when the report card comes home the parents look quickly open it and start looking at the numbers well, how much have you got this that no one reads the logo and says that there is something written here called atma deepo bhava and what does that mean why are we have we written it there i asked them do you have a session did you have any period in the school talking about this no and then i remembered that i went to iit where we had a logo also and in that logo it was written yoga karmasu kaushalam we had no single lecture on that not a single lecture in 4 years not even 
Four years we spent so much time discussing, talking so about everything on earth. No discussion, it was there in the logo, Yoga Karma Shukaushana. Then I remembered in my school that I had studied, that used to have a logo called Vidya Dadati Vinayam. Sir, Vidya Dadati Vinayam means education will make you humble, gives you humility. So different things like these are stuck in the logos, but they are just there as logos to sell better. That's the third problem. The teachers are doing it as a profession. The learners don't have purpose. The learner's purpose is nokri mil jai. Get an appointment letter. If you don't get educated, then you will also live, but without an appointment letter. The teacher's purpose is tankha mil jai, salary at the end of the month. For the people who run the institutions, business chale, that atma dhipa bhava is sells well, you know, in India, if you have those kind of things, something, something written in Sanskrit, but not even in India, anywhere, you know, for, fortius, uh, altius, what is it, like higher, uh, I, I, I mean, the Olympics or this, that, everywhere you will see something which drives you on this, but no discussion about all this. So the purpose has been corrupted for those who are running these institutions, and for running as in who are setting it up and for those who are operating this. Three problems I said. Then the fourth problem is, you know, we had, I'm sure since morning you had great speakers and you've had, but end of the day, I was seeing and I'm still seeing fundamentally, I mean, I'm trying my best but still, basically, how engaged are you? Some people in the front rows are still a little bit, but as, see, see, look at that gentleman, see, see, just there, in the black. Just look, all of you, stand up and look, see? Yeah, 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 exactly, he looked up, he looked up just now. This, this, yeah, yeah. This gentleman, if you saw him. No engagement, he's engaged in something else, altogether. So, us, sorry, sorry, sorry. I, I mean, it's drama. Don't worry. I mean, it's nothing personal. Maybe you were, but let, I mean, just let me do it. I just had to find someone. But there, was, there are people who are, who are not. So it's, and don't take it too. I, I understand. I mean, it's just maza. Bas thoda, thoda maza ke liye. It's not, not that I'm trying to pin you down. You are actually very engaged, I've been seeing. So I, I actually thought that if I do this on you, I will get away without a fight. Uh, <laughs> so the point is that it's very difficult to engage people. Because the format itself is not engaging, because the fundamental of engagement is not understood. This format that we are sitting here, it is futile for me to try to engage you also. All of you are just sitting in that chair. It's very difficult because the format is designed. Think about this. And this is the format. Yes, sir, you have. Aayenge, aayenge. We have, it's a 40 minute thing. I have someone who's also showing me the time. Come, come. Uh, we'll come to that. So. Uh, the, the problem is that we don't even know what it takes to engage. The whole process is trying to engage just the mind. Think about the classes that you have been from childhood. They were all, I mean, this still is a round kind of thing and all that. But basically, the fundamental format is where your body is fixed. If you Try to move around, teacher will say, hey, why are you moving? Sit straight. What is the problem? That is the format. There is no, no awareness that you are sitting there, you are a bundle of energy. There's no awareness. You see what Ramdev Baba and uh, Sri Sri Yogi Shankar, they have built empires just on the recognition that human beings have prana. Prana. So they have that package system of pranayama, which means energizing, using your energy. 
You think about whether in any of your class, your design, there is curriculum design, there is instructional design, there is no thinking about designing an experience where the energetic aspect of the learner who's sitting there is, will be engaged. That doesn't even come into the picture. Everything with the mind. But you are actually made up of at least four aspects. The tan, tan, sharir, physical, physical being. The energy, prana, man, mind, and chit, which is your consciousness. Very clearly these four aspects of your being. But these are not even understood. We were talking about IIM teachers with, with their PowerPoint, Blackboard, attending, not attending. The whole issue is that is there a, a, an understanding of what it takes to engage people? Now, if you are a bundle of tan, pran, man, chit, if you are a bundle of these four, and if I only try to catch you with your mind, what will the other three do? If you have sent your four children to my school, to my class, and I am playing favorites with one guy, you come back after a month, you will see that, oh, that one guy is okay, great, but the other three are not interested. They have not de developed. They are not even worried about being there. But that's what happening. Every time a learner is coming into a class, is four of him is walking. Four of her, I mean, him or her is walking in. The body, the energy, the mind, and the consciousness. But the whole system doesn't even recognize this, and hence there is no engagement. The entertainment industry understands this. And that is why when Pepsi wants to teach you to, to drink Pepsi, what they do is they don't come and make PowerPoint presentations telling you, this is how you should drink Pepsi, this, that. But you have ended up, and a whole nation has ended up learning that they should drink Pepsi. What do they do? They do a IPL. And in the IPL, you know, Kohli hits the sixer and the boundary and the ball comes and it is crossing over the boundary line. And at that point, there is written, drink Pepsi. So everyone is energized, and, oh, sixer, all that. And then you hit the mind. That is how we change. That is how we learn. That is how we work. That is how the whole process of culture change, behavior change, attitude change, skill development, whatever you may call it. It happens through all this process of engaging the body, the energy, the mind, and the spirit. Tan prana man chit. So fourth problem. The fifth problem is that education is not even connected with life. There is no integration with life. The whole process, 22 years of schooling, colleging, where you go, that whole system, that whole setup, doesn't look like what life is. It's a completely different thing. Everything about it doesn't mimic life. So there is no integration with life. Whereas when IPL is trying to convert you, then it is getting into your life in every way. Through the radio, through the hoarding, through this, that, that. So there is no integration with life. And finally, the the final problem that I talk about, someone also mentioned, is that there is very little connect. The curriculum and all that has, is very less relevance with what, you know, what is needed to live a life. So these six problems, not integrated with life, not engaging, not engaging, purposeless for the people who are running the institutions, or corrupted purpose, the only purpose is making money, corrupted purpose for the teachers, purposeless for the students, and irrelevant curriculum. Fundamental six problems. Now, before we come to the point about how do we solve this, uh, <clears throat> in order to understand the future of education, what we have to unearth are at least those tenets or those basic principles which have remained what is called sashwat or eternal, what has not changed. Everything about the current education system is actually in many ways great because it has given us so much. But what it misses out 
And the last session was a standing testimony to that because we were talking about AI and all that, but some basic eternal issues which kind of came up in your questions were, were not, were being skirted. No one was conscious about those issues. The eternal issues of how it works and that will actually solve your problem about the, the standard question that so much curriculum in the classroom to be done, what is to be done? Think about Kumbh Mela. All of you know Kumbh Mela, Mahakumbh. What used to happen? Why does it happen? The sadhak is up there in the Himalayas. He is doing his sadhana, or he or she is doing the sadhana. And in the sadhana, they have unearthed knowledge, expertise, whatever it is. Now, they also want to come and spread it. What do they do? They come down from the Himalayas, down to the plains where the people live. And then they engage with the people in, in or through the mechanism of a kumbh. What is that? That is the mechanism to wake up. Think about all the, facility, uh, all, all the uh, festivals that we have. What is their mode? What is the purpose of these festivals? All the festivals, Durga Puja, this Puja, that Puja, eh, oh, all this. What happens? The fundamental purpose is awakening. These are already there. The purpose of mass media, of a group like this, is only one purpose you can serve, which is awakening. Once you are woken up, then what happens? If you have woken up, then the next thing that happens is, then you will ask, what is going to happen now, this, that. So then you are curious, you want to discover. So Jagaran, Jigyasa, the solution, sir. I think he asked the question and, sir, we are now trying to quench your thirst. Jagaran, Jagaran, Jigyasa. Once you have awakened, then you ask, Jigyasa. Once you have asked, then the third process is Adhyan. That is where Adhyan means study, research, deeper, go deeper. If you have not done Jagaran, if you have not done Jigyasa and you are trying to do Adhyan, big problem, doesn't work. Doesn't work. The whole system, entertainment industry is doing Jagaran, education industry is trying to do Sadhana. Ed entertainment industry is trying to do Jagaran on some, some other things, on cricket, on reality shows, on music, and then sadhana is on, come on, that earth and moon. You think that artificial intelligence or whatever is there, the guy will have to first use it. If he doesn't even want to sit there and do it, to kya hoga? Will that solve, will that solve our problem? So Jagaran, then Jigyasa, then Adhyan, which is research, and then Sadhana, which is deep committed practice. Unfortunately, there isn't even a single word, good single word translation for this word in English. So I can only say deep committed practice. But awakening, discovery, research, and practice in simple ways. Now, the tools and technologies to support all this is very different. And unfortunately, this model has been there for thousands of years, but we just refuse to bring these together. Mass media does a great job of awakening people. You think about the movie Dangal. It awakened everyone, grossed 700 crores. Then now people awakened to the whole issue of women's empowerment. Then what? They came out. Do you have a Jigyasa system, this was a Jagaran system, the movie. Once the movie you came out, then did you have a process to take that Jagaran forward? Something had happened in the, in the person who went to watch this movie. There was no process to now I am awakened to the whole issue of women's empowerment. What do I do next? How do I do the practice? Where do I go to sa do sadhana? There is no integrity. So fundamentally, mass media, which does a great job of jagaran, awakening, and education, which is trying to do sadhana, are fracture, have fractured the whole process of the human change process. Human beings change, culture change, behavior change happens through this. That is fractured through this process because two different industries. And I hope 
the future of education understands these fundamental basic tenets of how this whole thing works. Whether we use AI, whether we use this technology, that technology, all that, but ultimately the, will only lead us somewhere if we understand these simple tenets. We can say about empathy, this, uh, all those kind of things are not happening. But these are the two or three simple models that I wanted to present to you, even for the gentleman who was asking, what is the solution? First of all, we understand that this is how it works. That tan prana manichit, jagaran jikyasa adhyan sadhana. That is how. Now, if in a, like you said, the problem that you are facing and which didn't, I thought didn't get answered perfectly. The question was that I have to finish so much syllabus in the classroom. How do I, there are so many children? That is not how you do. The classroom is not meant for that. A group congregation is only meant for Jagaran. And now we have the tools and technologies to carry on the sadhana, etc., this, that, in other places. You don't even do a class with the objective of finishing the syllabus and teaching those. No one learns anything in those classes. But if you can do things to awaken people, let's just finish this whole thing by a small experiment on this. It will take us the last two minutes. Do we have a couple of minutes now to end this? Do you minute? Ache? Okay. So, <clears throat> how does Jagaran happen? And this is what I would encourage all of you to include in your things. Can we have a uh, column? Just let's say. Uh, <clears throat> learning ka ye formula. How do we learn? Okay? Now this is something that all of us do together. Are you ready? Are you all with me? Huh? Are you all with me? Yes. Are you all with me? Yes. This has to be a concert. It is not possible to do what we have been doing. I can bet you will go back tomorrow. You will go back today and tomorrow I will ask you. Huh? You've been sitting here from morning, not even 3%, 2%, 1%, 0.1% of what you have heard, you will retain. It is not, these sessions are not meant for, we cannot do this. The only thing that you can do in a group is Jagran. Just let me know when you're ready. So this, all of you have to join in this. Okay, can we all stand up? We all do this together. Learning ka ye formula, pragya kaushal sadhana Sikhne ka formula, pragya kaushal sadhana Jeetne ka formula, pragya kaushal sadhana Excellence ka formula, pragya kaushal sadhana Kya kare, kaise kare, karte rahe
क्या करें कैसे करें करते रहें क्या करें कैसे करें करते रहें